All right, y'all, so the squatters are still taking over New York and terrorizing Brooklyn neighborhoods. Let's check them out. Boarded up windows, shattered glass and trash everywhere, all the result of squatters in the place. And people living in this Brooklyn neighborhood say not even the police can help. CBS 2's Ali Bauman with the story now from Diker Heights. Dirty dishware, idle ATMs, this property on 60... Where do you get just random ATMs from? Why are there just random ATMs there? This is getting, this is crazy. 7th Street in Diker Heights looks like the worst yard sale you've ever seen. Neighbors say it's been like this for months, ever since a group of squatters moved in. You feel unsafe. Neighbors say last summer, one of the alleged squatters destroyed their security camera with a piece of plywood. A few months later, another neighbor caught them taking water from her hose through a hole in the fence. I saw the hose that was connected to my water fountain to, the, to that side there, and I disconnected that. But they kept going down the block. They turn on the water and use the garbage bin, steal from, from us, and then hold it to them. The situation intensified in November when the house caught fire. Police arrested 46-year-old Cheng Chen for arson and criminal trespassing. But it was just the first of three fires at this house as recently as last month. The police came. They cannot do nothing, they said. I spoke to the property owner off camera who told me he moved out of the house a couple years ago to renovate it with the hopes of one day moving back in. He says he's still paying $6,000 a month on the mortgage and these fires have caused more than $900,000 thousand dollars worth of damages oh y'all out y'all mind bro y'all about to see what's about to start happening these people look at them look at her she's tired she's restless she's sick of it she's sick of it the other guy you could have seen it all over his face he's tired he's sick of it they're gonna start moving they're gonna start moving now you're gonna have these abandoned areas where people don't want to live now y'all ain't gonna like that then y'all finally decide to change something or do something about it but it'll be too late then an empty apartment upstairs. I don't know if they can come through the back mm. and decide to want to squat around my, my apartment there too. Now that the house is boarded up, the owner says he doesn't know how often the squatters are here or when they'll come back. You have to prove you are there, live there for 30 days. The claim is theirs. How the police going to do? Since squatting is a civil matter and hard to criminally prosecute, there's no recorded data of how big of a problem this actually is. City Council member Susan Schwang is crafting a bill to change that. Try to get to the city agency, like NYPD, to collect those type of data when people report and then do further analysis. Until then, she and many of the neighbors here are urging the state legislature to re-examine New York's rights for squatters. In Diker Heights, Brooklyn, Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. A growing problem in the city and a nightmare for landlords, squatters, who take advantage of laws that allow them to live rent-free as the lengthy court process plays out. CBS2 political reporter Marsha Kramer here in studio with an issue in desperate need of a solution, Marsha. Well, Christine, you're right. You know, I recently had a conversation with a friend whose mother died leaving her a house in Queens. Now, it should have been an easy sell, the house and the bank and the bank inheritance, but it wasn't. She was terrified squatters would see an empty house, move in, and she wouldn't be able to get them out. And she's not alone. Squatters have victimized many, many New Yorkers who say something just has to be done. My tenants only pay me one month's name. They know the game. They know after 30 days, you cannot evict them. No court case should go seven years. Why can't you just change the locks? Oh, I will be arrested instantly. They turned off the hot water and then reported that they had no hot water. It's a $250 fine per day, up to $15,000, punishable by five years in jail. So here you are. What? You have to pay the upkeep of the house. Right. I'm paying and not getting any rent? I'm not getting any rent. I'm paying the uh, gas and electric every month. Four stories repeated over and over and over again by irate and often unwitting property owners. Worry lines this marking their faces who came to see Councilwoman Vicky Palladino's office desperately seeking help. Hong Chen has spent thousands trying unsuccessfully to get the squatters out of this home in Mazpath. John so not only do I got to pay to upkeep my place, I'm not receiving a dime of rent and I'm having to pay the water and electric. I mean, I mean, y'all want to make it even easier for them? Why don't I go over there and make sure they got food and everything else in there? That's what I should do. I mean, you making it that easy for them? Should I go over there and cut the grass for them? 
Should I go and clean the house and be their maid? Like, what else should I do for them since it's all in their favor anyway? Bren using his pension money for expenses on this college point home, he hoped to provide retirement income. And Susan Mascara, who's used up her savings paying for seven years of upkeep on this Bayside home she inherited from her mother. I'm in debt. My credit cards are pretty much maxed out. Some of them make me cry. All I want to do is make things better. Councilwoman Vicki Palladino says part of the solution is to change the law, which allows people to claim squatters' rights after living in a place for 30 days. She wants it changed to 180 days. They own the property and they have no rights. Squatter rights, oxymoron. Squatters have no rights. Squatters terrified this woman who lived next door to this Whitestone home, a home they took possession of. 7.30 in the morning, there'd be people on the front lawn drinking beer, smoking pot. Different cars from different states showing up and then license plates being swapped. It was frightening. Marcia, you can feel the desperation from these homeowners, but this was focused, you know, the residents in Queens, but it's not specified to this borough, is it? No, it's, it's really citywide, and it's all five boroughs, not just the Queens or the outer boroughs. It's Manhattan as well, and it's people who own apartments, people who own houses, people who are snowbirds who are afraid to go to their vacation homes because if they leave their house untended, somebody could break in, and it also involves retirees who are afraid that their investment income might not come through. Well, you were right. Something needs to be done here, Marcia. Thank you for that. Well, welcome back. A new lawmaker is taking on the Empire State's squatting problem. Republican State Senator Mario Matera introducing a bill that would allow police to evict squatters based on homeowners' sworn complaints. He joins us now. Senator, it's great to have you on the program. And I want to talk to you about pushback because we've seen other states take a more aggressive approach, but I'm guessing in the great blue state of New York, you're going to get some pushback on this. How do you surpass that? Well, first of all, I want to say to uh, Taylor, Brian, and Jackie, thank you very, very much for having me on today. Um, this is this is a huge epidemic that's happening right now. Squatters have more rights than property owners. Um, this bill, S eight eight six seven, is an aggressive bill, patent after the new new Florida bill. Hmm. Um, which passed with the unanimous bipartisanship. Our great governor, Ron DeSantis, um, is put it into law right away July 2024. Um, this is a very aggressive bill because we have nothing right now. Right now, 30 days, just think about that. 30 days, somebody gets a complaint saying there's a squatter in my home. Please come in. That yeah. squatter has the rights. He says, I'm here for 30 days. And guess what? it becomes a civil suit, a civil suit. All of our property owners are right now have no rights. Squatters have rights. People, again, even being people being evicted, evicted yeah. is a huge issue to try to do this. Senator so right now, this bill is very aggressive and a sworn complaint, um, police officer comes in, you show that you are the owner of the property, mm. and guess what, we can get them out. Give the tools back to our law enforcement that we took away. Senator, our I, law enforcement right now with this bail reform is a disaster. Let, let me ask you this. I, I, so you're pattering it off Florida. I got it. New York is definitely not Florida. And you saw leadership from Governor DeSantis. I would say Kathy Hochul is not Ron DeSantis. So does a bill like this really stand a chance in New York, even if okay. it sounds like the right thing to do in Florida? Time's ticking. Times you need to do something. What do you? Something needs to be happening. Swift, fast, firm, quickly needs to happen. What do you mean? Well, we have a bipartisanship. I spoke to Senator Senator Monica Martinez today, and she is going on the bill right now in the assembly. We have Assemblyman Steve Stern. Steve Stern is actually on the bill um, in the assembly. So we do have a bipartisanship with this. This is a huge epidemic. What's been happening? Um, you know, I was telling the story, what look could happen just to an innocent plumber, okay? An innocent plumber mm -hmm. that went into a home to winterize a home, squatters in there, runs out, said that he was going to shoot him and kill him. He didn't know what was going on. The plumber, Tom Buckleman, goes in there, starts performing his work, and gets pummeled almost to death. 
Okay. Four months in the hospital. Oh. Pummeled to death. So, and guess Senator, what happens? people see stories like that and they are horrified. And so, the next question from New Yorkers and people around the country are what is the appropriate timeline that we can expect this, Bill? Well, I'm hoping that we could go and get this vote. I would love to see if it goes into the budget because this budget's late. But you know what? Right after the budget, we are trying to see what we could do to get this, you know, working fast and trying to get this at the end of session. Did, did that mean anything to y'all? What does that mean? That sounded like we don't know when. You might as well have just said, I don't know. So this is something important. We're going to be very aggressive with this. This is a huge epidemic. We all know what happened with the illegal migrant going in on TikTok. Yeah. And actually explain it to squatters how to go and squat into people's homes and invade people's homes and their property. And everybody has to understand, our properties are our most important investment for all New Yorkers and all Americans. Yeah, and they've you written know, like a playbook. I said, the American dream. They've life, written a playbook, liberty, and property. Senator, to make sure that everybody knows how to abuse the system as it's structured now. So we will follow up with you and see where this goes because there are many property owners in this great state that would like to see a change. Senator, thank you so much. Seven on your side, investigator Dan Kraft has been right here on our show breaking these big stories about squatters in New York City and the frustration that comes along with it. You remember this couple from Queens Mm -hmm. They bought that $2 million oh, yeah. dream home only to find out that a squatter was inside. An Eyewitness News exclusive, our team catching a squatter stayed off on camera. That also happened. And Dan yeah, she went to jail. The lady in the lower left-hand corner down there in that video, she went to jail. He's been in the front of all of this, bringing those reports right here on Mornings at 10. Oh, yeah. He did. Yeah, broke it all right here. Now, you were upset. We were upset. Now, those investigators are hitting more nerves in our community. And this time, it's with Mayor Adams. He's speaking out about squatters. He's now voicing his support in favor of proposed legislation to help fix this problem. Here's Dan with more. Good morning, guys. I want to give you an update on the squatter situation since we launched all of our investigations right here during mornings at 10. A lot has happened since our first reports aired, and the mayor is now sounding off about the growing problem. So, Adele, you're getting arrested right now? I'm being arrested. Yeah. For what? For being, in for, being in my, for being in my own home. After showing you a homeowner in Flushing who got arrested for changing the locks on her own home, to a Douglas and Queens family unable to move into the home they bought because the former caretaker refuses to leave. To a home in Brooklyn, the FDNY says was set on fire by squatters. Mayor Eric Adams says he supports legislation that would help protect homeowners. A woman's a home is her castle. And I think it's imperative that we continue to protect that. After our series of investigations, a group of city council members plan to file a proposed bill this month that would make it easier for police to remove squatters and to track how often it's happening. We have to get rid of the 30-day rule. The 30-day rule is insane. And we're also tracking two statewide bills that have been filed that would allow police to intervene in cases instead of having to take squatters to housing court. There was a reason that squatter laws were put in place, and, you know, I think people are starting to exploit what some of those reasons are. And I always get concerned, you know, your largest investment is your home. That's your largest investment. The mayor says he supports tenants' rights while also supporting homeowners, a group he says often go ignored. We're going to continue tracking all three pieces of legislation and we'll let you know what happens. Back to you guys. All right, Dan, thank you. And just a reminder, you can find all of Dan's reports that we were talking about on this topic right now by going to abc7ny.com. Just head to our site, click on the tab for seven on your side investigates, catch up on all of the coverage and weigh in as well. It is an issue that is not just here in New York. It is happening in other parts of the country. And certainly the conversation has been started in large part by seven on your side. I'm so glad um, because even as we speak, those people, those prominent families that don't that are not able to go back into their homes still can't. Right now, there is a fight to stop squatters across the city. State lawmakers working on a crackdown that aims to protect homeowners and their property. News Force Andrew Siff explains how this could work. They bought the house with money they'd saved. But Dr. Young Se Bay says she and her husband felt robbed because while- Because that's the American dream. What do you mean? You, you bought the house your dream home or the home you saved up for and planned on using for your retirement that was that was given to you that was told to you that was the american dream that's what you're supposed to strive towards and do like what do you what do you mean now i 
I'm going in debt because of that. So what y'all sold me as the American dream is now my debt. Man, get out of here, man. But Dr. Young Se Bay says she and her husband felt robbed because while they waited for renovation permits, someone broke in without permission and stayed there. Photos show they piled up bags of belongings and even grew marijuana plants. But when Bay called the police, the squatters said they lived here. It's really frustrating, stunned. Um, it's a really traumatic experience. Owning a home. That's they the got a whole drug operation going on in her home, and she can't do nothing about it. American dream. But some people have turned it into the American nightmare. State Senator John Liu has sponsored a new bill clarifying that one who enters onto a property or building without title, right, or permission, and therefore is not subject to the same rights and protections of lawful tenants. Meanwhile, in the city council, another proposed change, instead of tenant protections for squatters, kicking in at 30 days, changing it to 180 days. Mayor Adams said protections were designed to prevent unfair evictions. There was a reason that squatter laws were put in place, and, you know, I think people are starting to exploit what some of those reasons are. And while it's unclear how widespread a problem this is, lawmakers and police say reports of squatting are on the rise. It's up to us in the legislature, I think, to periodically take a look at the laws, see where there are loopholes, and close them. For Dr. Bay, getting a court order to evict the squatters took seven months, all because the squatters had fake ID with their address. They claimed that they've been there since uh, the October uh, in 30 days after passing 30 days and they um, become legal residents under the current law. So we couldn't really kick them out. As for this home, now that the eviction has finally gone through, renovation has resumed and they're hoping to move in with family this fall. Reporting from Flushing, Andrew Siff. News 4 New York. We're hearing more and more about this. Squatters living in vacant properties, confronting homeowners and refusing to leave. Some of these cases have turned violent. Some have even turned deadly. Recently, we told you about that Venezuelan migrant who you heard right there. He went viral coaching his half a million plus followers on TikTok how to squat in homes that don't belong to them. The video has already had more than 4 million views. L.A., Atlanta, Philadelphia, and New York City are just a few of the cities right now facing a major increase in squatting. And the issue is far more complicated than it may seem. Squatting is not the same as trespassing under the law. In New York, it takes just 30 days to gain squatter rights, and homeowners trying to get rid of squatters have an uphill battle. Well, now there is a new push in New York to stop squatters from taking over homes that do not belong to them. New York State Assemblyman Jake Blumenkrantz joins us now. He introduced a bill to crack down on squatting and protect homeowners. Uh, thank you for your time. And it couldn't come at a more important time when we had this brutal case in New York of this woman who was killed after she went into her late mother's apartment. Squatters are accused in her murder. Tell me what the law says now that gives squatters the rights that they have. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Marnie. Uh, yeah, I, you see so many of these viral TikToks of people explaining how exactly they can utilize our laws against us. Uh, my bill is very simple. All it does is remove the ability of people who are squatting to have the same rights as tenants. So go through some of the specifics of your bill. One is extending the, the days necessary to gain possession. What difference will that make, do you think? Yes, so many people do monthly rentals or they leave and sublet for a month. Um, this will make it so if someone is staying for more than a month, they'll have the ability to remove them. So it'll go from 30 days to 45 days. Uh, we also try to define squatters within the bill so that someone can take them to court and make sure they can have that 10 day eviction and remove them in a timely fashion. It's not considered criminal trespassing squatting, which to me seems like common sense, but your bill would also aim to change that. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, many of these people who maybe they go on vacation and someone shows up with false documents or we see so many different scenarios. I've had scores of calls of people with unique stories as to how this uh, crisis is affecting them. I mean, in New York, housing is expensive and people will find any way to gain the system to uh, 
to hurt people who own property. And this is just meant to empower property owners. What are you hearing? Some of the personal stories about how they're getting into these properties, how they know about them in the first place. Well, in many cases, they uh, came on, under certain circumstances, like they were going to stay for a month, or they're staying with a friend, and then they declare uh, they have rights under under being a squatter. Uh, in other cases, someone has broken into their home while they were on vacation, and now they are claiming that they have squatter's rights because they were there for a certain number of days. Um, again, each and every one of these cases is unique, and unfortunately, we need to uh, we need to do something to fix this. Uh, people who own property, they feel helpless, and this empowers them. Right, and they have really no recourse um, when you look at some of the damage that was caused. Um, in order to put this bill together, did you lean on other states or cities that have seen success in trying to combat this? Yeah, of course. States like Florida has passed in both houses a similar version of this legislation, and we're just looking to do what's right for homeowners here in and, New York. And what has been the response so far from your colleagues in trying to get this through? So I've been trying to create a coalition, a bipartisan coalition of uh, legislators in both houses. So far, we've had an outpour of uh, legislators on both sides of the aisle who have signed on to this bill. Uh, we're looking to advocate here in Albany all week long to make sure we can get as many members as possible onto this legislation. And I look forward to seeing us pass something in a bipartisan, bipartisan fashion. And this would not be... When, though? It seemed like DeSantis quickly got it done. He's in the get it done business. Why is nobody else in the get it done business? Just for New York City, this would be statewide essentially. I know we covered a case in upstate New York of a couple who couldn't get back into their own home. Of course, my district is on Long Island and unfortunately I have uh, a resident here on Long Island who's on the brink of homelessness because she can't get a tenant out and she has to pay uh, legal, electric, water, uh, and she can't sustain that for her children and the person who's squatting. Yeah. How long has she been in that situation? over two years. This is a common story and unfortunately some of the legislation on the table could make that process even longer. So we're looking to just mitigate it for those experiencing a squatter versus, you know, a traditional tenancy conflict.